Welcome. You're watching 2040 on WTRF. I'm Jasmine Green. And I'm Andrew Thompson. Later in the show, we will take you to a place where dance meets fashion, and we'll catch up with one of our stars of the baseball team. But first, our top stories. Tragic and puzzling. Those are just two words to describe the recent discovery of a New York judge's body in the Hudson River. Judge Sheila Abdus Salam was the first black woman to serve on the state's highest court. After finding the judge's body on the shore, authorities initially ruled her death a suicide. However, cause of death was not determined by the medical examiner, and the judge's husband does not believe she committed suicide. The investigation is still ongoing, as authorities are asking anyone with information to come public. Locally, Six Flags Amusement Park was not so amusing for 24 riders as they found themselves stuck on a roller coaster. On April 13th, the Joker's Jinx was 75 feet up in the air when it stalled, leaving 24 people stranded for four hours. All the passengers were safely brought to the ground using a cherry picker. While no one was hurt, this is not looking good for Six Flags America. If you recall, just three years ago, the Joker's Jinx made international news when people were stuck on the ride for almost five hours, forcing the amusement park to pay a heavy sum of $60,000 to one family involved in the mishap. As for the Joker's Jinx now, Six Flags spokesperson Denise Stokes says the safety of our guests is our highest priority and the ride will be closed for a thorough inspection. Unbelievable news out of Cleveland, Ohio, as armed gunman Steve Stevens has shot and killed an elderly man while recording himself doing so. Stevens has been recording himself on the Facebook Live app, noting that he will continue his alleged killing spree because of a recent breakup with former girlfriend Joy Lane. Stevens has stated over the Facebook Live app that he has killed nearly 13 people, but there has only been one documented death, which was the on-cam killing of 74-year-old Robert Godwin Sr. More info to come soon, and stay safe, Cleveland. To lighten up the mood a bit, we have more positive news coming out of our very own Prince George's County, Maryland, a company co-founded by Day entitled Pass the Ox is taking over. For those who are not aware, Pass the Ox is an up-and-coming label which is designated to bring the local and unrecognized talent of the DMV area to the main stage. Whether you rap or sing, this group of ladies and gents are ready to work with you to possibly get you big enough to where people will be passing the ox around to play your song. Here with Illuminate. You know, Illuminate is the co-founder of Pass the Ox. It's a very, very great promotion. And before we get into that, we're going to ask Illuminate a few questions about itself. Illuminate, what got you in the music? So yeah, my name is Illuminate. I'm coming from uh, Riverdale, Maryland, PG County. And what really got me into music, uh, I guess me and my little brother, He's also a producer, but um, when my sister went away to school initially, we kind of like wanted ways to like keep in touch with her, but not actually like talking over the phone. So we used to make her like demo CDs, of us just like rapping over like industry beats or whatever, and um, send it to her through the mail, and you know let her listen to it, entertain her for a little bit. And um, when I got to high school, I had some friends tell me that they actually liked the material, so I was just like, all right, let me see what I can do with it. Time move forward, and you know just went a little bit more serious with it. So family got you into account in a way. Okay, one, 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 one more question before we get into, you know, the very interesting promotion that you run. Can you recall one moment or one specific time where you knew that music was what you wanted to pursue, was, was what you wanted to pursue in life? Um, I think I would say I knew I wanted to pursue music was when I started to get positive feedback from people actually telling me. I mean, it's one thing when your friends tell you that they like material or whatever. But when strangers actually tell you that, it's a different feeling. So strangers online over the internet just want to, you know, I like what you're saying over tracks. So I'm just like, you know what, it's kind of cool. Let me see how far I can take it, you know? I'm very, very impressed at what he's doing right now. Him, along with a few others, are running a promotion called Pass the Ox. And they are basically, just to sum it up, are building up underground rappers. And that's very impressive because there are a lot of young talent out here in the DMV area. And they're looking for, you know, places to shine and just just to go ahead and explain that real quick is because it's very impressive and people should be on the lookout for it. All right, so as you said, it's called Pass the Ox. Um, me, along with maybe like three to four others, we like co-founded it. And we all artists, first of all, and we knew the issues that, you know, whether it's just not having enough things to perform at or places to perform at or coverage, et cetera, et cetera. So as artists, knowing the difficulties of, you know, proper, you know, I guess insight or whatever. We just took everything that we know was an issue and made that, you know, what we offer. So we're just trying to be a whole new light and like a better platform for underground artists in the DMV area. Those are quite the musicians, Andrew. When we come back, we'll talk about the talent that local students have, plus our latest play on campus. 
That's all coming up on 2040. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to 2040. I'm Leah Wedd, able to burn up the dance floor and strut in this stuff as part of Fire Motion. I'm president. What will you be doing in the event? Me as well as everybody else will be dancing in the show, mm. as well as dressing and makeup and hair. And what can you tell us about the upcoming event? The upcoming event um, is Dance Around the World in 80 Days. We're doing different dances from different countries. and We even got like similar budget-friendly costumes for each country. We have a few special guests. Like We have one of the other clubs performing. We have two local D&B rappers coming. What is your role in the group? My role in the group is fashion and technical advisor. Yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs> what will you be doing in the uh, event? So I'm gonna actually be in the fashion show. I'm actually gonna be one of the uh, the male models. And pretty much getting all the different wardrobes and everything together. So I got my hands somewhere in it, but for the actual dancing part, I'm behind the scenes. Gotcha. That behind the scenes. My favorite part of the show so far is the intermission because it's the most intriguing to me, at least. I mean, I love all our dances, but we've never had so much stuff going on to be put together in an intermission before ever, as long as I've been on this team. It's a good program for somebody like me to come into a dance team and not really know a lot, and they give me so much, and I can get it in that little bit of time. It shows me that they got, they can show me I got progress in dancing, and I never knew I could dance. But I know I got progress in this. They are really, really down to earth people, and they are very, very like I am serious about my modeling. They are very, very serious about their dancing. I love all of them dearly because we don't get a lot of help. It's literally just us as a team. Because our advisor, she's moving up and onward in her career in her department here on campus, so she's not as there as much as she would like to and I would like to. So we do a lot of stuff by ourselves. You can describe fire emotion. Fire Motion is not the only form of artistic expression being displayed at Prince George's Community College. In the Cotton is a thought-provoking production that will make things make people think about today's racial tension and its impact on young adults. We caught up with the director, Preggy Yates, to explain more. Directing in the Cotton. Um, I know it was a collaborative process with three. When Bill Gillette from Howard Community College and Seth Schwartz of Carroll Community College and Gary Fry from Prince George's Community College decided they wanted to collaborate on a piece. And they had heard about the farm theater in New York that um, 
writes new plays for universities. So the Farm Theater was really interested in, in working with the community college, um, and so they decided to come and work with us, send a playwright um, to work with our students. So they sent Morgan McGuire. She had, a dis had several discussions with students who were chosen from each of these three colleges. They all decided that they wanted to focus this play on the very difficult issue of race. Um, and they wanted to set it on a college campus. So she went home and she wrote a play in 13 days, came back to uh, Carroll Community College and they produced the first run of this play at Carroll Community College in November. Um, she came down and saw it, took it home, made some revisions, and we started rehearsals on the new version of the play in, uh, let's see, in March. And so in, for three weeks we, we worked. Uh, tonight is our dress rehearsal, our final rehearsal, and we open tomorrow night. So this is the second kind of rendition of the play. It was called Tanner in the Cotton, and now it's called In the Cotton. There's all different sorts of plays that bring up social justice, whether it's uh, Twilight Los Angeles or Laramie Project. Mm -hmm. Have you directed a play like with similar content or with the same type of thing, impact in terms of the? Um, the it could be the either issue. race or you know yes. uh, important social issue. Yes, they are actually my favorite plays to work on because I because I like plays that make people think and make people talk. I enjoy doing that kind of theater, that kind of social justice theater. I've done several other pieces. All right, well, thank you, and we You're look welcome. forward to seeing In the Cotton. <laughs> I, I look forward to seeing you. Then. EGCC has it all. Mm. On April the 20th, the Rennie Form held the first on-campus talent show hosted by SGA's Antonio Morrell and Taylor Brooks, displaying all talents from singing, rapping, and even dancing. Most of the time, students pass each other without saying a single word until now. After each performance, you can see and feel the love for each stage. Here's one of our winners, Daryl Grizzly Gordon. How y'all doing? I mean, the event was amazing. Um, to be honest with you, the crowd was very supportive. I just, you know, can't wait for the next event, you know, for real. We look forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. Fun night out turned tragic. PGCC's SGA held a mock date rape trial, informing students on how serious and severe drugs can lead to one's demise. Friday is the perfect time for friends. A double date spirals into a nightmare. After multiple drinks, things got out of hand, where one of the victims became a victim of seated as even side, but due to the evidence, one suspect was found guilty. When we come back, we visit one of the school's top baseball players and we'll check in on the news sports program being launched on campus. You're watching 2040 on WTRF. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're gonna need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. Well, start a day. Mr. Trejo, if I transfer this guy to you, my gentle technique isn't really working. He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Yes. You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. 
switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to 2040 on WTRF. I'm Kevin Whiteside alongside Jay Garns here to talk about sports. Yeah, our women's basketball team had a banner year and our sports broadcasting opportunities have gone to another level. But first, we hit the diamond. Our baseball team is off to a great start thanks to second year pitcher Mike Hovermill. I had a chance to sit down with him and talk about school, life, and the sport he loves. So recently you had a good game against Arundel Mill. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, it, it was, uh, I had a, yeah, I did have a pretty good game, but uh, I have to give it all, all the credit to my teammates for making plays behind me and then my catcher for calling the, calling that definitely uh, helped me succeed in that game. Okay. What do you think has been the key to your success? Uh, probably uh, working hard with uh, some of the upperclassmen on the team, some of the sophomores. Like uh, our pitcher that's going to Norfolk State, John Mahoney, him and I have been uh, working really hard. And definitely I have to give him a lot of credit for why I'm successful right now. That's good. You ever get nervous? During the game, depends on how uh, serious the game is. Of course, every game is serious, but. I get more nervous when the game is bigger, when there's higher things, higher stake. But at practice, it's just like, you know, just another another day. <laughs> okay. So do you have any uh, routines or tips that help you focus more so you don't get nervous? Uh, every time I throw a pitch, I make sure I step off the mound and I take a deep breath. And that, that definitely helps. And it also helps that our head coach always, <laughs> he always reminds me, hey, man, go out there and uh, take a breath. <laughs> so okay. that's, it, it's, it's. It helps a lot. Definitely. Okay. Do you ever find it hard to balance school, social life, and baseball? Um, so, sometimes it can be kind of hard if uh, we have a game that's like an hour and a half away, get back, you know, get back late, get home at like 10 o'clock, and sometimes you don't want to do your homework, but you really have to. But uh, we, have, we have academic study hall for all the athletes, so like, got to get all your homework done for the week, at those, those hours. Okay. Do you have any professional players that you imitate or uh, admire? None that I really imitate, but I have uh, two favorite players that I like. Uh, Marcus Stroman on the Toronto Blue Jays. Okay. Uh, I, I love the way he plays the game, and uh, I love Adam Jones. He's just the uh, he's just he's the guy. He <laughs> he really knows how to play play the game right, and uh, he's he's fun to watch. Okay. How long have you been playing baseball? Uh, I've been playing baseball since I was. Four years old, and uh, oh, wow. it's yeah, it's been a it's been a lifetime thing, and uh, I'm gonna just try to play out as long as I can possibly play, and hopefully God can do the rest. Now on to another element of sports cheering. Sports wouldn't be sports without the aspect of cheering, from people yelling in the stands to performing routines from the sidelines. Cheering is an essential part of sports. In early May, the cheerleading world championship took place in Orlando, Florida. Prior to leaving for the competition, our very own Jackson Green caught up with Merlin Twisters, Team Rain. So, the cheerleading world is right around the corner. How are you feeling right now? Right now, I'm dead. We've had so many practices, so many hours that we put into this one competition. We are looking so forward to it, but right now, I'm just dead. And mostly excited, but nervous, excited, all those types of emotions. I feel like this is the first year that we're actually going in as one of the top dogs, and everyone is waiting to see what we're going to put on the floor. You all came so close last year, bringing home the silver. What are you guys doing differently to make sure you bring home the gold? Well, these like and I are to make sure the same thing doesn't happen as it did last year. We came really close, thing lost by a point. So we just make sure we hit hard at practice so that one point won't be a reason why we lose. I feel pretty confident in what we're doing right now. Do you know, last year we lost by one point. It was our dance. Like, we just take all those little things that we can build up extra like 0 0.01 points. We'll use those points to build up to, you know, how great we can be. And we just take everything one step at a time and we really perfect our details and take everything one step at a time. So this will not be your first time obviously going to Worlds. What are you looking forward to the most? <laughs> I'm so excited to just go out on the mat and try our hardest to win for my last year. I just want to go out there and give it my all. And you know, being at Disney World and all that good stuff, but I'm mostly excited to take the floor for the last time. So for the people that have this misconception about cheer, what would you say to them? 
Um, first, I would have them not watch like high school cheer. I would have them watch competitive cheer and like college cheer because once you see that and you see all the acrobatics and flipping with the stunts, I think you would change the perspective of all star cheer in college. We put our lives into this. We put our lives into the sport. We've been doing this for you know however long, like our entire lives. And we push through everything. We're technically athletes, and we fight just like any other sport would. So I consider it a sport. I know all my teammates do. So, you know, it's a sport in our eyes, and that's all that matters. To the broadcasting side of sports, what a monumental time it was for, for PGCC as the school's pilot sports show, Sports Nest, made its debut. I got a chance to sit down with the anchors and learn more about their experience with Sports Nest. Well, um, so from high school, I know that I enjoy watching sports and I enjoy writing. So I came to PG um, for journalism at first, and then after creating, I'm after doing all those classes and credits. I was like, mm, let's get in front of the camera, do broadcasting. So I started um, an internship at NFHS Network, and then um, this semester I had Lou Holder. A professor who was like, "Hey, I'm starting a show. Um, if you want to get on board, just let me know." So I did. I broadcast one of the games, and then that next class, he was like, "Hey, you're the anchor." My uh, background started actually when I was a freshman back in fall 2014 of um, my collegiate career. Um, I got started with WBGR Sports Entertainment Network, where I'm still um, at right now with my own show, and uh, it's been a great ride. But then. I said to myself, it's time for me to get, to get in front of the camera. I think it was the first game that I did, I did sideline reporting for in, in D.C. But for SportsNest, how I got here was um, first I joined the sports broadcasting team that's led by Lou Holder, shout out to him. And um, we had a meeting one night and he basically said that, look, this is the team that we're going to be rocking with, so this is what it's going to be. And then after that, um, the season, for the regular season that had ended for the basketball team. After that, I went up to watch them play in the regional championships. And during that game, he said, Brandon, you're the host. So I was like, cool, let, let's, let's do it. Uh, Sportsness came alive from uh, Professor Holder. He had a vision that he wanted to do a show where he would um, give all the athletic teams here on the campus um, a little bit of clout. Um, I believe that it's going to have a huge impact. Um, one, to get students to actually want to do broadcasting, actually a real chance to do it. I think it'll have a tremendous impact because with the um, advent that we have, the new equipment that we have now, we're able to do it and show all of our live broadcasts on television now. I feel great. I am the first female sports anchor at PGCC. So I think that's, that's the, the best impact ever. A team is coming together and playing as one, from the first to the 12th person on the team. Daryl got the opportunity to talk with a few players on the women's basketball squad to discuss the leadership that they, that they take part needed to be on the team. My name is Daryl Gordon, and I'm here with PGCC's women's Isle basketball team. And we have our point guard, Mayana. And how do you feel about being uh, the team's leader? Um, it's an important role to take on. I just feel like I should get my teammates involved a lot. Um, and for facilitating the offense. I'm here with PGCC's guard, Asia. Asia, please tell me, how was your overall take on the season? I feel like we had a great season, and I saw improvement at the end of the season, next season, to become a better team. Mm -hmm. What places in, uh, on defense, offense, that you think the team could definitely see some improvement? Uh, and on defense, I feel like we, we are good on offense, but the def defense wins championships. You know, to be honest with you, as a, a team player, you definitely got to see what in, you know your team can do better as far as offense, defense, or all around individually too. And I'm here with Odessa. This is PGCC Women's Isles guard, and you know she's actually new to the team, quote unquote. Actually, my question is, what made motivated you to come back to the team? Talk a little bit about that. Um, to come back to PG. Um, I really wanted to play basketball and, you know, it's PG to start coming here, even though I really redshirted last year. My teammates from last year influenced me to come back and play and play it out to so finish out and hopefully make me 
get to where I want to be. I am here with PGCC's forward, Gina. Gina, please tell us, you know, what elevated your game as far as the team and yourself? So the team, um, we, pro we progressively got better and better as the season went along by watching game film and learning from our mistakes. Um, Coach gave us a good practice plan every single day so we could improve. Um, she gave us a good game plan that we could execute and every game as the season went along we um, saw improvement and got better. So what would you say would be a jump shot or your free throw? What, what would you say got better? Um, so throughout the season I worked on my inside game a lot as well as my jump shot because there's always room for improvement so I tried to work on every aspect of my game. That will do it for 2040. We hope you enjoyed the podcast. For Jasmine, Leah, and Dion. Andrew, Daryl, and Chib. We say thanks for watching and see you next time.